All right. Hello. I'm live at the Red House with Casey Noel. Hello to you. Hello. How's life? <laughs> Good. Thank you for <laughs> thank you for coming over. Yeah. Here. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Uh, once again, failed to describe the location to you in any way. Yeah. And it was a, it was probably a scary trip, but. I, for some reason, every time I drive somewhere new, I'm terrified that I'm going to the wrong place. So it's fine. I, I just, I live through the fear. Yeah. It'll, I survived. It's becoming like an ongoing, I hope it becomes an ongoing joke with the podcast that like every time somebody comes over here, they're afraid. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you might as well building. go ahead and start them in a fearful yeah. place. That's yeah. always good for content. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Get them comfortable. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it is a little with the, there's like a, like a road that's like very bumpy that just, le- and you're like, I'm like, is this where I, where I die? Exactly. Is someone going to come kill me now? Exactly. But I'm, I'm alive. And then, if something happens to me. <laughs> then that's a different story. Yeah. I, I like to think that it's like scary at first. And then when you open it up, when you, when you get into the field, uh, it's like a relief. It's but, like, wow. Yeah. I hope. Yeah. Yeah. No, it is a beautiful location. So. Let's start here. Okay. How did you, because you, I know you uh, uh, through through the online world yes, as yeah, someone sure. in the same vein as me, like yeah. pretty rootsy yeah, songwriter yeah. out there doing the thing. How long have you been doing this? Yeah, I feel like that's a really weird question for me. I guess for the past like seven years and for the past five years, I've really been like going after like um, doing like this full time and working towards the goal of being a touring musician and stuff like that. Um, but I feel like, especially with this genre of music, there's not many people like me where I did not grow up in this type of music at all. Mm. I didn't grow up like, I didn't even grow up like having people to jam with and stuff like that. I didn't have people in my family that were musical. I found this type of music just like in a really random way but yeah I've been doing this now for about I would say like seven five years being like the seven years was like a a start and like kind of finding my footing and stuff in the past five years I've really been like having some more direction and and going after it yeah so so how did you end up getting drawn in I guess to the Americana roots country yeah so I I started playing guitar when I was really little, actually, because it was one of those things like find an instrument if you want to play and see if you're good and you like it, whatever. Um, and so <laughs> at the time, when I was a child, I was an abnormally small child. And we couldn't find guitars for me besides like really cheap like toy guitars. So mm. my I'm half Costa Rican and my abuelo went to Costa Rica. And when he was in Costa Rica, he brought me back my like very first like classical guitar and so I started doing classical um which was fine I I liked it I was good at it um but it wasn't like my passion um but my mom forced me to keep taking it um so then around like eighth grade or whatever my mom was taking me to a lesson and I had sung like ever since I was little um but at some point it became a fear thing for me and I was convinced I couldn't sing. And my mom wanted me to get back into it and she was like, she told my guitar teacher, you know, Casey can sing. And I was like, no, like, <laughs> I, don't, I don't want to. Um, and so he made me sing and then after that he was like, okay, you're going to sing every lesson. Hmm. So then it was sort of like this thing where I didn't, I hadn't thought about singing and playing guitar at the same time. I hadn't really thought about anything like that. Um, I actually used to want to be a ballroom dancer, weirdly enough. That's what I was doing. I was going to be a competitive Latin ballroom dancer. Really? Yes. Huh. Yeah. So I grew up listening to a lot of Latin music. That was, like, what I loved. Um, also, like, my mom loved, like, Simon and Garfunkel and CCR and stuff like that, so I had some of that mixed in. But at the time, my passion was Latin dancing until I realized – could not find a dance partner here because guys here don't dance. Mm-hmm. So I gave that up at like 16 or 17. Um, and I've always loved art. So that was like a huge heartbreak of mine to have to like give that up. And at that time, I just went full into the music um, and started, you know, not being like around music at all. I didn't know anything other than mainstream. I didn't know like 
that you could make a career like doing this kind of stuff. I didn't know people. I didn't think about the fact that people wrote their own music. Mm -hmm. And it was like at this time where I, I was like, you know, I really do love singing. I feel like I'm supposed to be in the arts and stuff. And my guitar teacher was like, well, you have a great voice and now you can accompany yourself singing and playing. Have you ever thought about writing songs? And I was like, no. <laughs> um, so it was like all this very weird discoveries that even made it so that I would be here. Um, and I think as I became um, more of an artist and like writing and stuff like that, somehow I found like Americana music and um, like um, one of the bands that I first got into was a band called Jamestown Revival. Um, and then I became a huge fan of Brandy Carlisle. Um, and it was just discovering that. And I think for me, I love that type of music because it's really authentic um, and there's more like rawness to it. Mm -hmm. I don't like, I love like hearing instruments. I mean, everybody loves different things. That's the cool thing about music. But me personally, I want to hear like the instruments. I want to hear like, the natural voice. I don't like a lot of things done to the vocals. I just like that. And I like artists that have that. So it was just, yeah, it was, I think it's cool. Cause I, it, it came to me in a different way than a lot of people. So I have this like love for it in a different way than people who just grew up with it. I have like almost more of appreciation for it. Cause I'm like, Oh my gosh, this is so awesome. You guys just grew up with this and I've discovered it later on. And it's like magical <laughs> to me, you know, but yeah. yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Awesome. So, so, well, I mean, I think that really told the story pretty completely. Like I tried <laughs> cause my, it's so random, but yeah, I'm glad that did you grow up in this uh, I grew now? up around music and stuff, yeah. but I, I, I guess it's tough. I've definitely, I don't think I grew up in that world necessarily. I did grow up loving songwriters and yeah. that was always something I was drawn to, but I don't think I knew kind of like what you were describing. Like there's like with movies, with all of art, I think up to a certain point in my early twenties, I just like everyone thought that it was sort of like. The, what was mainstream available yeah, yeah, yeah. was what there was and everything else was like, uh, I didn't know that there were other categories underneath all that. Yeah. So, you know, first I think I discovered like, uh, like screamo shit yeah. was like what I, I found out I liked in high school. That was, I guess, so I guess before my early twenties or whatever, but, yeah. uh, realizing, oh my God, there's like this whole category of music that, no, that, not that many people know about except for the people who know about it or whatever yeah and then that kept happening and then yeah. I think when I found a couple of songwriters in the Americana world that I really connected with yeah. that that was just like I think the search is over now I think this is like where I, yeah yeah this is what I like the most yeah kind of yeah I definitely relate to that too it was a lot of like you know before I was writing songs I'm like well I need to cover some songs and I'm, like, looking into people. I think actually probably before Jamestown Revival, one of the first people I found was Amos Lee that kind of led me into um, that kind of music. Mm. Um, that was, like, also my first that type of concert, like, concert that wasn't at a coliseum was seeing Amos Lee. Mm. Um, and then I got into Brandy Carlisle and stuff. But it, it was, for me, I... Um, I think people assume like a lot of musicians who like want to tour and stuff are like people that love like the spotlight and stuff like that. So, and I'm not actually like that. And I, for the longest time, never considered a career in music because Coliseum shows like that to me is like not appealing. Like I'm not the type, I'm much more of like a, I, I mean, I would say I'm a performer, but I'm more of like a connector. Like I like, mm -hmm. I like, to connect with an audience and, and connect with music and put myself, I guess, in a, vul in, in a vulnerable position in terms of, like, just being authentic and sharing my emotions in songs. But I'm not, like, you know, 
gonna like strut on stage like that's not me <laughs> like I I would I do want to get to the point where I'm like you know hair flipping and like rocking out and like letting loose yeah. more but to me it was never like I just that doesn't appeal to me it's just not me I like cracking jokes on stage and playing music and playing good music and having good songs with lyrics to connect to people but it's not about me it's about the energy if that yeah. makes sense so and I didn't really I didn't know that was a thing so to me I was like you know this is cool and I respect it and it wasn't like I didn't like I mean like I do love certain pop stars I love Adele I think Bruno Mars is insane I would love to see both of those people and they're like especially Bruno is like a performer performer yeah. um, and I want to be a performer but more in the sense of like I mean, like a Jason Isbell, like those people that like you go to their show and it's like the music is at the center. And then it's also like the personality is at the center, if that makes sense. Not about the lights and and the dancing and which is weird because I used to be a dancer. But, you know, <laughs> I don't know. It's it's bizarre. So that's an interesting thing that you point out, like kind of being able to look at a room and a concert experience or whatever from yeah. the perspective of somebody who actually dances and also somebody who performs yeah. music. I sometimes, I've, I, some people, some musicians, particularly like instrumentalists, I think that is like dance as a reaction to their music is something that they really appreciate mm -hmm. because like there aren't words involved or some, something like that. I don't know, but I'm, I, I kind of don't, I don't love it when people want like that's what they want to do at a show yeah it makes me it's just distra I don't know it's just not that's not I know what you mean because I know on. there's like there's a difference between um I don't know how to say this and not like there's always those people which I appreciate more to like they just have not a care in the world. But you know the people that like come out at shows sometimes and they're just like spinning. And it's like, it's not even related to the music. It's yeah. like, and you're like, what's what's happening? <laughs> so I get what you're saying. I don't mind it, yeah. but yeah, I, I like when people, you know, I, I do have a lot of upbeat songs. So I, it, I like when people dance, but I know what you're talking about and I can see that. Yeah, I have memories of, it. I think usually, often not at my own shows, but being at a show and noticing someone that's just their dance is just like bending their knee every so often <laughs> like a like a baby yeah like, <laughs> like a baby. how babies dance <laughs> yes like that and then but when a slower song or like a beautiful song happens they're still doing it and like clapping their oh, hands oh yeah yeah but that's they, annoying they like yeah. slowly sort of forget that that like it's like they can't it's like their brain doesn't register that the way that they're trying to enter like offer their energy to the song isn't what it's called yeah, for. Yeah, I see what you mean. Like, it's it's like this disconnect between performer and audience where you can, yeah. at that, that's like the point where you can really tell somebody is not getting it, you know? Like, you know, yeah. like those moments that are special at a concert when you see somebody and they're, they've been doing like upbeat stuff and everybody's into it, but they go into that like slow song that's like really deep and meaningful, but the crowd follows and it gets quiet mm -hmm. and everybody is just like mesmerized. That's like such a powerful moment. Yeah. I love stuff like that. So I get what you're saying. Whereas that is like, that's your cue that, oh, this person is not there. We're not riding the same <laughs> music wave here. This person, I don't know what's happening, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> and no, no shade on those people. It's just a funny thing. That I don't happens. know. I feel like that was, no, I'm <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah. I get that. So yeah. the, the Costa Rican thing I'm interested in, yeah. um, like, like, uh, so my, my grandmother's Cuban. And okay. So I've been like, so it, it's something I feel really disconnected from. Okay. And I've been like trying to find opportunities to work that into my whole, just like where I can. Yeah. That piece of heritage or culture, like find ways to tap into that artistically. Yeah. I wonder if you if you fuck it all with like Costa Rican music or Costa Rican. I art. I have found like a couple artists through like my cousins in Costa Rica, but I need to listen to that more. But I do feel like um, I'm really in tune with my culture. The one thing I will say, um, I'm not fluent, and I get on myself with that. I understand a lot, and my goal is to be fluent one day. Um, but like I grew up with my my mom was born in Costa Rica, but she moved here when she was four. Um, to High Point, actually. So I grew up like with my my grandparents being around and like eating Costa Rican food and mm. having like um, 
my fam, my Costa Rican family, like my immediate, more immediate family around me. Um, but yeah, um, I went there the first time when I was 10, um, which was like such a cool experience. And then I went again when I graduated high school. Um, and then another time, I, I've been like five times altogether, um, I believe four or five times, um, and visited family there and stuff. Um, but I, I think too, like growing up doing, um, Latin ballroom, mm -hmm. um, I also listened to a lot of Latin music, um, and dancing I think has affected my music, all of those things. I definitely feel like, um, Latin music has a very, like, this sounds weird, but Latin music in terms of like emotion, you hear it way more even in the upbeat stuff, you hear the emotion come through more than like pop music, like American pop music mm. that has like maybe the same energy. And I feel like Americana is all about emo emotion and like Latin music is very emotional and you can feel it. So I feel like I grew up with that um, really deep connection of emotion in music. Mm. Um and I write from a very emotional, like, feely place as an artist. Um, and then I also think um, Latin music has a lot of um, pause for dramatic effect. Mm. Um, so I've been, I, I've found myself and I've been told by people that I, um, that it's cool that I'm not afraid of space or like quiet space, which I've never thought it wasn't like to me, it wasn't me being smart. Like I wasn't like, I'm going to, it just <laughs> is how I hear music. Like I do pause for like things and I let things sink in and I'm not afraid of quiet. I'm not afraid to stop the song. I'm not afraid to stop playing guitar and hold a note and then leave some space and then start again. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's very, um, you hear that a lot in Latin music, even if you don't realize it. And sometimes, like, with something that's faster, it's very quick and you hardly realize it. But it's there's key points in Latin songs where they they add some sort of drama, and usually it's by backing off and then hitting a beat really hard again. Mm. Um, so I do feel like that's sort of come into my, my writing as well. Um, but, yeah, I'm really – I'm lucky. I grew up um, <clears throat> very – like, I guess my, I like, I was, I always knew I was like Costa Rican and like, I, I always thought it was cool. I think by the way, my mom told me like, oh, this is something different. And it wasn't until I grew up that I realized like some people were like racism, I guess. I didn't realize there was any racism <laughs> towards that until I got older. Um, but yeah, it's been something I've always been proud of. I think it's really cool to have, um, especially like Latin culture is so fun. Mm -hmm. It's such like a warm and inviting um, culture. I I feel like Hispanic people are some of the nicest people that I know. So yeah. I'm proud of that for sure. Yeah, I dig that. Yeah. Did you grow up with any sort of like that or like what was what's both parents, one parent? My mother's uh, half Cuban. Okay. And she and her sister i think i think all of my aunts and uncles on that side all understand spanish and okay. some of them speak it fluently yeah uh and so it was and my grandmother there's absolutely no getting around the fact that she's cuban yeah or like her sister they're just cuban as hell yeah and uh <clears throat> that's part of our it's part of like our uh our 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 dinner opportunities and stuff like yeah. our meals together yeah it's definitely an influence but as you might expect with Cubans, uh, for, for her especially, she just considers the Cuba that she's from to not be on the face of the earth anymore. She, it yeah. just doesn't exist. Uh, this Cuba that exists now is just more yeah. like a like a weird zombie of what was. Yeah, I can totally see that. So, yeah. So, uh, you know, I think for her, she's like, I don't I don't care. I'm not. I'm hardly Cuban anymore. I'm just hardcore yeah. American. Like I'm American. Yeah. And she takes a lot of pride in that. So yeah, yeah. I think that's sort of why it fell through the cracks a little. Yeah, I, I, I. That makes a lot of sense thinking about that because I've heard from people that are Cuban that feel that way too. You yeah. know, um, yeah. So much of like the beauty of that country and that culture was ripped from them, mm -hmm. and they don't feel that connection anymore. Um, yeah, that is, 
I, I guess that's definitely a thing. Um, Costa Rica is, I'm lucky in that too, it's like very relatively safe and stuff and it's the culture, they've preserved it really well. But Cuba is definitely, I will say I relate to the, like my grandparents are both very proud to be American. Yeah. Like very, I think a lot of like um, people that have come here from other, especially the Hispanic culture, I think is very, when they become Americans, they're just very proud of that. Like my, I, I would say even now, even though, you know, they love Costa Rica, they would call themselves Americans yeah. first. They love their culture, but they love America. And I, I mean, a lot of it, I mean, in Costa Rica, they were middle class, but middle class in Costa Rica is not the same as middle class here, you know? So they really were able to move here and um, create a better life for like my mom and her siblings. So it was to them, it America is just, it's, it's great. Um, a couple of my friends that have been, uh, whether they're just like Anglo-Saxon <laughs> or they're uh, uh, Peruvian or whoever, yeah. A couple of my friends have this just deep romantic love for Costa Rica yeah. that I don't really know much about. I've never been there, yeah. but like what what is what is this thing that people fall in love with with Costa Rica so much? Um Well, they have a saying which I have tattooed on me, pura vida, um which translate at translates as pure life, but really people use it as like the best it can be. And I think it's like this mentality that like kind of you can feel in Costa Rica especially I will say like if you're going to this like the capital city it's different but if you go to like the beach towns and stuff there is like this energy that's like a lot less stress a lot more appreciation for things I think in general mm -hmm. like if you a lot of the like for instance like a small beach town that I've been to a bunch a lot of the locals that live there they they're surfers they live like a really like just basic life, but they love the nature. They love the food. They love like they don't need all this stuff. So I think there's this such a stark difference between like the pressure that we feel here. It's like like I always say whenever I go there, I can like breathe. Mm. It's just like the energy is like it's different. Like everything's like, oh. Oh, I don't know. I can't describe it. And I will say Costa Ricans are like the nicest people, like truly the nicest people. Like I've met like people just through being like people who like tour guides whenever we've done like really cool tours or whatever, or people that worked at restaurants that then like I stayed in the, the town and visited a couple times and like we became friends. Um, the last time I went, actually, there was this one lady who uh, worked at this breakfast place that... Um, me, my mom, my sister, like, loved. And she was so sweet. And every we came, like, three times. And every time um, after the first time she, she like, had our table, she was, like, guys, move. Like, she would tell the other <laughs> staff. She'd be, like, there are table. This is my table, whatever. And it was so cute. Um, and she was, like, she knew we were um, Tika. So, like, it's also a lot of pride in, like, being Costa Rican. So, mm. like, coming into Costa Rica and then like finding out a lot of people can tell I'm Costa Rican um not so much my sister she looks a little bit more like my dad um but my mom will be like yeah I'm a Tika and they're like oh my gosh so this lady we became friends with but we didn't see her for another three years till we came back and we actually tried to go to this breakfast place but apparently it closed and our last day there we went into this little shop because my mom was like wanting a specific like sweatshirt that said like Pura Vida or something. She's like, maybe I can find it here. I don't know. So we go in and I'm like looking around and I look at the lady working at um, the cash register and I'm like, that's her. I'm pretty sure that's her. And then I came up to her and I was like, and she was like, I thought that was you guys. And she was like, so ex like was crying a little bit. And it was oh. like, and she was so excited and she was like are, are you guys staying like how long are you here I want you to come over I'm gonna cook for you guys and it was like so genuine <laughs> and we were like no like we leave tomorrow morning and she was like oh my gosh she's like when you're here she's like friend me on Facebook I'm gonna send you my number <laughs> next time you're here I want you to come over and I'm gonna cook for you and it's like 
it's genuine. Yeah. Like, you know how here people like bullshit you and they're <clears> like, we have to catch up. Costa Ricans mean it. They don't say it unless they mean it. And they like, they, it's, it's different. Yeah. Like it, it wasn't like for her, it was like a very, when they become your friends, usually it's like, no, we're going to stay in touch. We want you to come over. Like the <laughs> hospitality is like next level. But so like, that's like my, I think best explanation of like, I think why people fall in love with it. Cause it's like, pe- they are really happy people. They call it mm-hmm. like one of the most happy countries in the world. And it, it is like, I mean, it has problems just like every other country, but yeah. And it's beautiful there. It's hard to be sad when you're, when it's sunny and yeah. there's animals and <laughs> beaches and stuff. It's so green. Yeah. It is truly magical. I'm biased, but. Right. Is that term, did you say Tika? Tika, yeah. Tico and Tika are what they call like Costa Rican. Costa so like, Ricans. they'll be like, yeah, Tico. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Um, but it's great. There is like, it is cool. There is a lot of um, pride to be Costa Rican. And I, I, I've always wondered too, like, every time I go to Costa Rica, you see Costa Rican flags everywhere. You don't see American flags anymore. Yeah, especially. Uh, I mean, lately. I think. Yeah, I <laughs> yeah. think. I mean, over the years, it's just. I don't know what I mean. We've had a bunch of messed up stuff happen, whatever. Um, but like, even. I mean, every every country has their messed up stuff, even Costa Rica. But I, I feel like they have a better sense of like. Community and like togetherness. Yeah. And it's and I think. Yeah, like you just, there's so much pride in being Costa Rican and like, you know, like you meet another Costa Rican somewhere and they get so excited. Like I remember one time I was in D.C. um, and I saw this man wearing a Costa Rican jersey of like one of our players. It's like a big deal. And I like, we just went out to him and like patted him and I was like, pura vida, which you could say. And he literally like lit up and was like, oh. Oh my god! And I was like, "Yeah, I'm Costa." And it was just like this pure moment of like, there is like very much like this really cool like connection between yeah. other Costa Ricans, which is like I love it. I love that. Yeah. I and I mean, and not to not to take it to the idea of the American identity, but it's like I I do I I wish there was more of a unifying sort of. Uh, I mean, I think it would be a lot nicer to people if there yeah. was. And it just a, I, maybe it's a generational thing. I don't know because when I think. Like my grandfather, when I was growing up, it what my grandfather always had a flag in his yard, and he took pride in it. So when it yeah. got ragged, he went to the store and got a new one and put it up. Yeah, and a lot of dudes from his generation did. And I don't know if it's because he was in World War Two. Yeah, I don't know if it's like that generation or what. But you know, I mean, honestly, it's kind of it's weird now. It's like people now. It's not uncommon for me to maybe hear people talk as though they associate people who take pride in the American identity as like somebody who's scary or not trustworthy yeah. or weird or whatever. Yeah, it's, it's like, like come well, on. you're not allowed to do that. It's yeah. very. I I find that too. It's very strange to me. Yeah. Um, you know, Costa Rica has never been like, um, like in terms of that area, it's always been relatively safe. Hasn't just doesn't have the problems that the countries surrounding it do. Mm. Um, but they've really improved. Their economy has approved, improved a lot. Um, tourism has boomed. Um, they've been able to go completely green and all of their energy is... Complete, really? Yes, completely green. Wow. And they're so proud of that. So I wonder if part of it is that there's been an increase that a lot of the people have seen in terms... Or, or growth that the people have seen, whereas America people haven't seen it or we've taken it for granted because we've been we've grown up relatively most of us have grown up relatively used to the the blessings that we have and the ease that we have in life um so I don't know if that's it I don't know if it's that sort of difference in terms of being able to see something improve Mm. versus just growing up in it being like you know america's safe america the you know whatever you know what i mean i don't know yeah i think it's a lot of things yeah it's definitely a lot of things yeah it's a uh, for sure one of the big ones it seems is just like a, sh- a shift in what it, like i think patriotism for 
your country is not like an exclusively obviously what we're talking about is how it's not an exclusively American tradition. Yeah. It's like and it's and it is a tradition and it's something yeah. that like you all over the world people take pride in their landscape and yeah, their where home they come from, and their yeah. community. And I don't know why here to a different degree in some pl- than some places but in the the impression I get from the out the the outside view that I that's a little wide reaching a little generalizing about everything is that certain certain uh so, like I don't know if it's psychological to some degree or if it's just like theoretical like politically theoretical ideas that have become very popular I think have made people reject all traditions including including that one including like identity of country patriotism identifying positively with the place that you come from i think it's just like people's beliefs have just made them feel negatively about almost yeah. everything that's there's so much intensity towards everything <laughs> yeah that it's like yeah it's it's seen as this weird thing um it's sometimes sad. i'm like surprised that the music that you and I make still is is popular to, in, in any way, uh, m- meaning just the Americana roots yeah. world, because it's traditional music in some way. And it's like, I just, I sometimes get the feeling that people feel really disconnected from almost all things traditional or have for a while. Yeah, but I think there's like, that's the thing that makes it special is people miss that, mm. whether they realize it or they don't. Which that's what I think we're about to see or are starting to see now is uh is people realizing that they miss it and getting yeah. more connected with traditionalism. Yeah, because there is something special about um that kind of writing and that kind of music um that I think can connect with so many people from all walks of life and from and and people who like all different types of music because I think at its core it connects to like really humankind a lot more than like stuff you hear on the radio yeah um and it makes people feel um not alone I think we kind of just live in this world where we portray our best self all the time and we don't get deep if it's a vulnerable thing I, I think now maybe it's a little bit more people are talking more but I still think even in the way we talk about hard things it's like almost a way to people toot their own horns in a way of like you know I'm dealing with this and I'm you know it's weird everything's like a show and I think um Americana music is this really cool space of like talking about life in Mm -hmm. in ways that other music doesn't yeah I think I think one of the key traits that I notice in Americana is how much it tries to it seems to be motivated by honoring the past in some kind of way that's the I think the idea of roots is yeah. just honoring the past, honoring the traditions, and there's something very gr- grateful in all that, and something mm-hmm. like rich and old and deep about yeah. all that. That you know, yeah, I don't think you can like toss out easily, and it isn't something that Richard and I were talking about this when he was over here, and it's like in a lot of pop music, it all feels like it's about finding joy or escape in the current moment and like it's all about having fun in this moment but I think like roots and other forms uh, other music styles that are connected to roots are often about like cherishing the path that led us here or some shit like that yeah yeah and I will say too like I think of Americana I think in a different way than some people do I don't I think of the tradition that that started it and stuff to some degree, but I kind of feel like Americana, some people hate this about Americana, but I like it in that Americana, I feel like is for artists who don't really feel home at any one genre, but love songwriting and just want to be their authentic self Mm -hmm. as they express music and are not necessarily writing for anyone but themselves, which I also don't mean like I write music that I want people to connect with, but I don't write music thinking about that necessarily. Cause I feel like if it comes from me or from something genuine that I'm, I'm seeing and I'm trying to write about, then it'll connect no matter what. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think a lot of other genres write towards 
a specific because it is you know genres are just are easy for people to sell music in so it's like Americana is more hard to pin down what it is exactly and I think it allows for more freedom as as an artist because people don't you can classify so much as Americana yeah um and I think that's cool some people hate that and think that there should be more like rules Borders. and stuff yeah. and I mean I've heard like bigger artists talk about that um but I don't I don't know I think I don't think it should be so black and white I don't think music is supposed to be black and white I agree I mean I agree everything you just said I thought was really interesting and like uh, a, a more clear way to articulate some things that I, I think I think sometimes yeah. about Americana. And I totally agree. And I, I don't even feel the need. That's probably why I use the term Americana or roots sort of interchangeably because of how vague they are and because of how borderless they kind of are. Because I don't care about any of that stuff. Yeah. I don't like subscribe to any of that stuff. I'm not motivated to like pick a tradition and, and, write things that reflect that tradition even if it's like rock or like old-fashioned country or whatever country might be considered now or whatever all those like very clear rule books that say this is exactly what's in this I just I don't I'm not tempted to be a part of those at all I don't think it creates good songs in that I think it can create songs that people will enjoy listening to, maybe, but I don't think at a core of what I think of as songs, it's not going to be something that you're, like, proud of that feels like part of you at the end Mm. of it. You're writing for somebody else and for something else. Well, another thing about that, too, is, like, how much those movements in music are stuck in time sometimes. It's like, when we talk about grunge, it existed for a very specific window of time and we have no idea i mean no i about to i was about to go off onto a totally different rant but um (laughs) grunge existed yeah pearl jam still exists but it isn't like we call them grunge at this point it isn't like when eddie vetter puts something out we're like oh a new grunge album grunge is still alive it's like that whole movement just died and other like i can think of other acts the other day at work a lincoln park song was on somebody's uh like like Spotify or whatever. Yeah. And I remember thinking like, yeah, damn, that was a very specific time where this type <laughs> yeah. of poetry was yeah. popular. And it was all this like, you know, all that like, oh, them, all that like <laughs> the very worst part of you. Yeah, is like me. really angsty. Really angsty, but like kind of cliche, y- but angsty. Yes, yeah. That was like the late 90s, early 2000s. That yeah. was what was popular then but everything cycles back through yeah certain things do i think i mean like even for instance like um like the whole grateful dead like that kind of like where you jam for 85 years on one song (laughs) (laughs) i i can't that sounded so like i'm not knocking it but i just think it's you know yeah as the songwriter and me love I love a solo I love a good solo but I can do an eight minute song once you get to like a 20 minute song we're done I'm done I'm sorry you've lost me I'm not on drugs usually at concerts actually I'm never on drugs really (laughs) I don't I'm like one of the only musicians I know that like doesn't smoke pot so I'm right there with you yeah so I'm like this isn't maybe if I was high I would like really be into this but like I, I I have disconnected. But that is coming back. Like, I mean, you see like Billy Strings, which yeah. I actually, I think Billy Strings is great. But he is very much doing the whole, we'll jam on a song for a really long time and just like riff and shred. And yeah. all of his band members will take turns doing the same. Um, but that whole thing is coming back, which is cool, I think. Whether it's my thing or not, I think that's so cool. Um, and I think with him, it's really cool, especially because it's this traditional music coming back. And, I mean, he's playing, like, Coliseums now. Yeah, it's crazy. The fact that, like, a bluegrass, like, rootsy artist is, like, doing crap like that mm-hmm. is so cool. It makes me, it makes me excited for humanity, yeah. actually, you know? Um, but in even, like, old country, there's, like, some old country, like, um, Sierra Farrell. Mm-hmm. Um, 
she is doing great. I literally just saw her this week. Where was she? Uh, she was at Cat's Cradle, sold oh. out show. I, um, I just have like, I just have gotten familiar with her. And she's amazing. And you like the crowd that she brought. I'm a, like, I always pay attention to this now because I think I think every concert is an opportunity to learn as an artist. Um, so I I was just paying attention to everything, but I was looking at the type of people and it's like all ages, a lot of young people and a lot of really old people. Um, and you know, I was like playing some of her stuff from my friend um, who she's not like in the music industry at all, but she grew up um, around like really like the old country classic people. And she was like, I love her voice because it's so like, unique but also classic and familiar and I think people are like really getting drawn back to like that kind of stuff yes they are which I I love yeah um her opener I had never heard his name was Timbo and he's like that whole like Johnny Cash um all those guys Waylon like that vibe and he had an amazing voice and his playing was amazing. His songwriting was like top notch. Like, and it was these, it was like your classic stuff, but still unique to him, which is hard to do. But I think people are really like being drawn back to that stuff. I think, you know, there's part of people being like studying like old music, you know, Mm -hmm. that's cool for some people. But then through that, they end up going and finding artists that are making that music again, which is really cool. I think that's, yeah, I, I mean, I think that's part of a weird cultural movement that's bound to happen, that's going to go, like, that's an interesting way that it's being reflected, because I don't know if it, I don't know if the music reflects it or leads it or what, but I see what you're saying, too. Yeah. I think all that's true. I think we've had a really healthy diet for a real long time of whatever the opposite of everything you just described is, like, kind of talentless dancers who, who spend like a hundred thousand dollars just on a vocal on a vocal recording session and then just go out and do a bunch of moves and make millions i think that's been like pop music for so long people are ready for a a shift back to people who actually know how to play instruments and like sing hard and yeah like have some and i think even that has has shown through in the pop industry with some of the artists that are coming through like i mean Billie Eilish, I think, is somebody who is extremely talented. She has a great voice. She is a great writer. She's really hands-on with her music, which I love. I think that, to me, I'm, like, very hands-on with my music, so I respect anybody um, who's really hands-on with theirs because it's hard to do, and it's really personal, um, and I think that's what people want is there's so much like fakeness with social media and stuff. It's all just like we crave knowing like the real person and the real something. Um, and I think in music, if you're, if you're hands on in it, you can, people feel more connected with you. And I think, I mean, I think that's part of her appeal is like, she feels, um, real to people. Yeah. Even if it's pop music and, you know, there's a lot of editing, it's all her editing, it's all her ideas to push the song. She's not having, she has her brother. It's like all this very, like, contained, this is what I want to put out and this is me, Um, which I, I love that. Yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, I think it's true that to some degree these patterns go round and around, and yeah. I don't know what that means all the time because I think some of these these little subgenres that exist, they, they don't come back around now. The, the bigger thing that they're a part of might yeah. circle back around, but you know, certain ones, certain ways to be in a, a genre can, can really devastate you or whatever. It can yeah. lock you in time to where once that part of music isn't relevant anymore, then you're just not going to be relevant anymore yeah. because you're somehow revealed as like, you're not, you're not a real you're like I don't know. It's like some sometimes when these um, like who comes to mind? Like maybe somebody like Bon Jovi, he dominated music for so long doing what he does, and then he, it's like, but but that did that that time period of music did shift, and then when he becomes a country singer or whatever for a brief time, it's like, 
it's kind of obvious to all of us like that you're you're going you're following where the where the money is in music you're just like following what's what's the smart business move to make yeah that's so weird too because there's also like there's that and then there's there's those people that are like that I really admire who just will completely switch up what they're doing because they're passionate about trying something else and yeah. doing something else and it happened organically but then their fans being mad because that's not what they want to hear from them mm -hmm. which makes me mad because i'm like well if you like this artist whatever they're passionate about passionate about is going to be good because you're best at whatever you're passionate at is my opinion whether you like it or not i mean that's one thing but i think it's bizarre to me to be mad at somebody for yeah. that you who know? comes to mind um, I'm trying to think. I had someone in my head and it just like, okay, here's one person, um, Morgan Wade. I don't know if you know who she is. Uh, I think I do. She's like blowing up in like more pop country, but she sort of started off Americana-y. Um, and she's, she like loves pop music. So I think that's what she wants to be doing anyway. But her original stuff when she started out was a lot more like Americana-y. Mm. And I think it was more just because that was what she was able to do at the time, like with uh, the band that she had or whatever, or, or I don't know, it doesn't matter if she just changed what she wanted, but she's been very open about, um, you know, talking about how much she's really grown to love like Miley Cyrus and like Billie Eilish and these kinds of artists and how that's like the type of like music she kind of wants to make. Maybe she has a very country accent, so maybe more like country pop, but mm. whatever. But she's passionate about it, and she has a lot of like her like OG fans that have been like commenting like just how they're pissed off that she's doing whatever. And it's I don't I don't like that. Yeah, I I think if it's, it's I can be in your your example in the Bon Jovi thing. That's different when you can feel that it's for whatever is. Like when when you feel a career ending and instead of just like, you know, you're like, yeah. well, what can I do to like stay on this? And it's not like an authentic thing. But when it's this person who you can tell is like and who has openly talked about what she wants, you just didn't pay attention to what she was saying she wanted yeah. to become to begin with. And now you're pissed off. That's a personal problem. I get that. You I know? think I think it's easy to notice when. It's the question of whether it's like a safe move or not, because or I don't it's not necessarily that. I mean, it's exactly what you said. If somebody's doing what they're passionate about, then it kind of doesn't matter. Yeah. But it's like people thinking of you as like this product maker, you know, yeah, that's yeah. instead of seeing the person right. who is just doing living their life. You yeah. Know? Yeah. I mean, I guess like um, it's it's happening country a lot. Like a lot of people have gone to country for the paycheck, I think like mainstream Nashville country. And then you think of somebody like Mumford and sons who went away from Americana into this, like this just kind of just, just generic pop rock thing. Yeah. That I think I, I stand by, I stand by their desire to do that. It was, I didn't feel personally like I gave a damn about that at yeah. all, but I think um, it just wasn't that good. I think that like pissed people off. Was that people were like, "We don't like." We this. liked the first two albums, but this is just yeah. isn't good compared to those. Yeah, I think too. I, I I'll be honest. Like all this stuff we're talking about, like I think I don't think about it that much. Yeah, I don't like. I'm thinking about it now because we're talking about it, and it's interesting to talk about it with other musicians because it's such like a I mean, the music industry is like a mind just melter <laughs> industry <laughs> yeah. and it's like bizarre and fascinating to talk about but I th I just don't think about it I think it's better to not think about it I, agree. I think that's when you start comparing and when you start focusing on everybody else and I don't think that's what music is about I think it's also when you start strategizing and there's something about not, like not not from the standpoint of being a entrepreneur or whatever but within the art, when you start strategizing and when you Too start much. being like, hmm, like my my last album, I said I did this and it sounded this way. Like, what can I do to like capitalize on that more? It's like that's when it's like, dude, I don't know. That's just I don't relate to that approach yeah. to art. I look at it as like I, from from one line out. I just try to write. Yeah. A great, if I get a great line and then it turns into a great song. 
and then I have like 10 of those and I can like kind of put those together in a beautiful way. That's, that's great. I'm not comparing it to anything I've ever done before. I'm not comparing it to like my, my retirement plan. Do you, you, you write in a similar way to me. I always start out with like a one line. Yeah. Always. I, I, I don't know why it's like, I, it's one line usually that comes to mind and then the song comes around from that and usually this is I feel like this is weird most people I feel like maybe it's a chorus for me it's always like a line from the very the very first line of the song mm. um but do you feel like when you this is me I don't know I've heard one other person say this but almost every time I finish a song I'm like that's my last song I'm ever gonna write like I'm not I don't know how to do this sometimes, do you ever feel like that <laughs> sometimes I do and and I think it's because I have a I have a challenged relationship with music anymore and so sometimes I really do think that like I don't know if I have any more in me or whatever for me it's just like it's like um I'm not a a forceful songwriter and so like I'm obviously I'll, I'll try and write things all the time but I find when something my best songs and the one that I'm like oh this is when I'm gonna play out this is when I'm gonna like record whatever I can't just Sometimes I can go and be like, I, I feel creative, so let's try something and it'll happen. But typically it's, the line comes to me, I'll write it down, and then I'll revisit it. But I'm not actively thinking of the line when it comes to my head. I'm not thinking of that start of a song when mm-hmm. it comes to me. So I'm like, well, what if I don't get one of those? You know what I mean? Yeah. What if that doesn't come and then I don't have anything? Yeah. It never happens. Um, actually, I've mentioned Brandi Carlisle a bunch because I love her she's like my hero especially as a female musician she's such a badass um but I read her book um that she came out with and she talked about there was like a two-year period where she didn't write a single song yeah um and she's like I thought I was never gonna write another song she's like and then then I did she was like you know and she even said she had like feelings during throughout the years where she she would write something and then she'd like be like I I don't know if I gonna write another song or whatever Mm -hmm. um I think there's different types of songwriters. I'm like the very emotional, like I find something very like emotional and like special and sacred about songwriting. And then I think there's people that can write great songs. Like, I mean, there's people that do that for a living. They go in rooms and they can write even like really great, like Americana songs that are meaningful and deep. They can just sit down, come up with an idea and then come up with these. But I'm not like that. Just like weaving a basket. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I'm not like that either. Uh, I do write. I write for Songfinch, and so that's kind of I have to do that sometimes. Uh, yeah. But I still, I'm trying my best to figure out how to make it still the same because I think everything you just described, uh, at least where you're coming from, I I do relate to that. It's more, it's very psychological. It's very uh, impulsive a lot of the time. Mm-hmm. And it's like, if I find that line, if it's it, mo- a lot of them really do come from just a line or a sentiment or something yeah. like I'll, I'll think if it isn't a line, some actually most of the time, it's probably a word yeah, or a single word or a single like turn of phrase or something. Then it will, I'll, I'll start to expand that into a bigger picture. Yeah. Uh, if it isn't that it's, it might be something like, a like strange human emotion might occur to me. Like one of them was feeling guilty about a New Year's Eve kiss. Okay. And I was like, that's weird. That's yeah. possible. Yeah. And odd. And yeah. I have to figure out what that story would be yeah. if somebody felt guilty about kissing someone on New Year's Eve. Yeah. So then I figure out how to tell that story. That's usually what it's like. It's like these weird pictures that I'm yeah. creating that like, Kind of, you know, I don't know. They mean something to me. Uh, and I don't like the formulaic basket weaving approach for myself yeah. personally. I do find that I have a formula, but it's not. It's just how I naturally go about writing songs. Like I'm typically, I'm not a one day songwriter. Like mm. it can last over a month, a couple months. Um, I am like, I say the inspiration is very like spiritual Um, And so it's like there's times where I like just randomly think of the next part of it. But I'm very like I I think it still goes back to emotion. I'll like write things and then voice memo it. And then I really believe in leaving space like a day or two. Then the next day, listen to it again. Hmm. 
that's where we're most different probably. Oh, really? Yeah. Um, to me, that's been the best thing in terms of like just building a song. I'm, I really like to give myself, because to me, a lot of the times, maybe I know where I want the song to end, um, but I leave space for me to almost experience it and like let it evolve. Mm -hmm. I And I think sometimes I get in different head spaces where I can be, I can think about it in a different way than I was and I can still follow the direction of the song, but in a different way that I think will connect better. Or I don't know what it is. I don't think about it. I just truly believe in, in letting the ear like hear it fresh, mm -hmm. as fresh as you can. It's hard because it's so personal, but I think allowing space is like a really big part of my songwriting in that, um, I want to come from it as me and what I want, but I want to also listen to it as a listener. And like, do I like this? Is this connecting with me? Yeah. Even though I wrote it, but I can't do that when I've just been like working on it and haven't taken a break. So if that means I'm working on two songs at one time, anything to give me a break between whatever song I'm working on to where I'm not like zoned in and only hearing that, and not having a break from whatever that is. I also like the trick too. Another thing I do is sometimes if I'm not sure about something, I won't, maybe I'll voice memo it just in case because I think it's good, but typically I won't write it down and I'll kind of do the test where I don't do anything with it and the next day, do I remember it? Interesting. If I remember it, then I, that's I always write that song. I just always do. Sometimes I go back to the ones that I just recorded, and it turns out to be a great song. But I think that's a really cool way for me to write. Yeah. Anyway, I don't know. That is interesting. Yeah. I uh yeah I'm I'm more like, and I don't I used to labor through songs, and now I kind of don't. Uh, you mean like force it like. Go ahead and get it out, finish it. Yeah, like, I remember a couple of occasions where I was just like, I am determined to finish this song either today or, like, tomorrow. Like, I have yeah. to get it done. Like, I have to make it come to be. And some of those songs turned out to be quality, good songs. But I don't do that anymore. I just don't do that. And, and I notice sometimes that, like, I think I have two categories. It's like... There's a voice memo period. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, it's, I'm d messing with something or I hear a melody. If, if no words come to me within that session of playing with this thing, then it's going to be a voice memo. And honestly, if it becomes a voice memo, there's a really good chance it won't ever become a song. Mm. And I, I haven't really been aware of that until this conversation, but I've, I have like way more voice memos that aren't songs on my phone than those that actually became songs. But usually if I if I find something that has a phrase or a line or something associated with it, I can usually make that a song really quickly compared to how I used to. It's almost like as soon as I get like one verse or half a verse or something, then I'm like, like, OK, now I see the whole structure and everything that's going to be there. So now all I got to do is fill in the words that I want. And sometimes that's like really easy to do. Sometimes it's like I can do that within... 15 minutes and it'll be and that's over and yeah then, then I have the song songwriting is so fascinating to me how like I could talk about that all day like I love to hear how people write songs because yeah. everybody is so different in their methods but also very similar like what you're saying makes sense to me even though I don't do it but like I can see how someone can operate from that way yeah um but yeah I think I'm I'm very this I I have the same view a lot on not forcing it um but i i used to be all, all, like that all the time to mm -hmm. where i just and i'm hypercritical of stuff so sometimes i would take longer than i needed to on a song if that makes sense yeah. like i i was hypercritical of where i kept going with the song and then that ended up being what i needed to go with but i'm i i'm not thinking that it's right you know so there have been times where i've been like like for me sometimes it'll be like a last verse or a bridge and that's it that's what I need I have like the bridge or already and not the last verse and I have 
you know, and it's like I procrastinate on that, even if I like sort of have an idea yeah. of it. And so sometimes I have to just, and it's, it's, it's like a weird thing. I don't know what the psychology of that is, but there's times where I will be like, you are basically done with this song. You're j- today, like we're going to do it. Like you just have to, because I was so opposite of that and that I'd be like, well, if I'm not feeling it, I'm not going to force it. I'm not going to. F-. And then it would be like this thing that it, it was stupid. Um, so I think there's a fine line of that, but I think songwriting in general is so interesting. The other day somebody was saying like, oh, would you want to like teach a course on songwriting? And I was like, you want me to teach? (laughs) I mean, I guess I could, uh, but I don't do it. And I think I'd be good at like if, if somebody was already like a, like a person who was a novice songwriter Mm -hmm. or whatever and wanted advice and we were writing together or whatever, I could do that. But it's such, it's such a personal thing for me that I wouldn't even know how to describe it in like a lesson way. I think, I think I could if I worked at it, but it's very weird. (sighs) You know what I mean? It is. There's no right way to go about it. There's that. Yes. It's like. Oh, that's what it is. I, that's what it is. I feel as though, as you're describing it, it's like the idea of something that subjective and that personal. It's it, there's something that seems inappropriate about learning how yeah, somebody else right? does it. Right? Yeah. Like, that's like it's not the same as building a structure. It's something extremely personal. It's like <laughs> if 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 an art a young artist was like going to and this is a bit of an extreme example, but if a young artist was going to like pablo picasso like teach me how to do what you do it's like that's not the point of art yeah you don't you don't do it for that reason yeah you don't do it to do what i do you know what i mean yeah that's so true because i feel like for me and it's hard to be you know original as a songwriter but i do feel like um i've always had a very strong sense of who i am even at a young age and haven't um really changed myself for people. So I I feel like I was lucky in that in terms of songwriting. I kind of already knew who I was as a person, which helped me know how to write songs from a really personal way and have them be different in structure to like, I think there's certain, like, you know, a John Prine song, right? When somebody even just reads you the lyrics sometimes, even if you've never heard that song, he has this, It's not like every song sounds the same, which is hard to do when you have a specific style, but his delivery is distinct. And so I think that's like the biggest thing that you want to do as a songwriter is find your delivery. And for me, I don't know what it is, but I know that I have it, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. I think... I always think about, I think it's how you approach a song. You need to figure out how you approach a song and that'll help however you, however the song comes out. So for me, I I think a lot of people get stuck on for some reason wanting to write really long songs or songs that are so deep and wordy. And I don't think about that. Like I want good lines, but I think about, okay, well, what is my message here and how am I going to, and finish it whatever length that is so my songs are typically not longer than f- four minutes mm. because when I get to the the message and the point and the end of the story then I'm done I don't like I think some people get so caught up in like adding lines and buzzwords and all these things um that they miss the point of music in general Like, people just want to hear a story, whatever you have to say, and have it all come together. And, you know, there are some really long, deep songs that I love, but, you know, I think those happen organically, too. It just so happens that it it took longer for John Prine to write that song. It, It was a longer story. It took longer, but I think we do ourselves a disservice when we put this. I think there's, there is a lot of pressure to be like really smart and, you know, I don't know, like really like in your head about songs. Yeah. And yeah, thank you. That was the word I was looking for. Like the, the need for people to think you're smart and, 
an intellectual person and whatever and then I think you're missing the whole point I think like for me John Prine is like one of the if not the best because his he'll hit you with these lines that it's not like he's using big words but it's this phrase that hits so deep that you've never heard it said that way and it makes sense to everyone that hears Mm -hmm. it no matter your education whatever and it's so deep but it's not him in this show-off mode but you can tell this man is a genius by what he just said because it made sense to everybody and it was deep and smart but I think he just in it like if you hear like videos of him talking he was such like a genuinely nice happy man who loved doing what he was doing and I think when you come from creating music in that way that's why that's how people connect with you and Mm -hmm. that's why he's connected and continues to connect and will probably always be this person that we turn back to when it comes to songwriting because that's just what songwriting is to me in my opinion yeah he nailed it i don't think that you can get better than that Hmm. i liked the i liked your use of the word delivery i don't think i like i must have i must have been i must be aware that I have, I prefer certain performers and that some people I can look at and be like, that's a great songwriter, but like the, like, I don't, it doesn't hit me the way it's hitting other yeah. people. Yeah. And like the way that they deliver it, I guess is the right word. Uh, maybe doesn't work for me or yeah. so, something like that. I'm not sure, but I really like that idea. I like, I like the balance of those two things. The Like, and music seems to have a lot of that stuff. Like it's a balance of, something like that's interesting because it's a balance of like the words you say with also like the sincerity the 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 conviction with which you might say it there it also reminded me of this video i saw of when neil pert was like trying to become a better drummer or something yeah. and he started taking lessons with this jazz drummer guy yeah and he said to him something about like playing jazz playing drums like doing anything is a dance and the dance is not when your feet hit the ground it's not like like the point at which your feet hit the ground the dance is what you do with your arms and like what you do with your grace like how graceful you are as you do the thing it's it's not about the steps it's about the motion in between the steps yeah and i was like fuck like i I really that has stuck with me hardcore uh it, yeah as like a i don't know just like a, something that you that i can imagine being applied to a lot of things and i feel like it plugs into that too like this yeah. idea of the way that you access the words that it is that you're saying yeah it's almost like you know the thing with music um where you know there could be like two guitar players and one is technically way better than the other like no theory way better or whatever but the other one listens to whoever he's playing with and serves the song better Mm -hmm. i'm gonna choose that one any day over the one who's like cocky and just it's like well i went to this school whatever whatever yeah whereas self-taught whatever um you know i think and i think too like you know i think musicians compare each other a lot especially musicians who are you know, jaded a lot. And it's like, well, I'm better than this person. Or I don't think that you can say that necessarily because I don't think music is all about who's better. I think it's about who's connecting. Mm -hmm. So some people are getting opportunities that others aren't because they're a nicer person and they connect better with people. Sorry. And people want to, um, hear their music and they want to hear what they have to say and they want to, um, book them yeah if that makes sense there's something that they have as a person that this artist doesn't have like they might play great music or whatever but it's not hitting Mm -hmm. and those people will get really mad and and feel like they're being i mean the industry is hard in general it's not a fair industry but they'll feel like they're not being treated fairly when in reality sometimes it's not about what they're what they're thinking it is yeah 
they're missing the point of the music and are, are jaded in the fact that they've been going after this for so long and still aren't making it, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I feel like it is, you know, there's certain artists that might not be the best at something, but what they are great at, it's like so unique and so special that like people love them for it. Cause it's not, they don't, they're not like anyone else in that. Um, I think that's important to, to, um, recognize, um, for me anyway, like I want to get better at guitar. I'm great at accompanying myself, but I would love to be able to shred a little bit more. And I feel like I don't know theory that well. Um, and I also didn't grow up playing with people. Um, so I'm hard on myself with that. And I come from, this this spot sometimes in my head where I feel like people don't respect me as much because I've been in places where I they're like let's jam shred on and I'm like I don't play like that mm. for me I don't think I have to I think there's a lot of artists that I love that don't play like that either so I don't know why I put that on me but I think there is this whole thing that we as artists do sometimes where it's like you compare and you feel like you need to be doing something or know something that other people do. And then, you know, for me, I want to learn that, but I need to not come from it as a, like, wanting to do it for that reason. Like, if it's making my craft better, then that's great. Um, But it's weird. I think that skill and heart are, like, very different things. I think what I have is... Um, I think skillfully I've worked really hard on my voice. I've taken vocal lessons and stuff. So that's where I feel my strong suit. But I think as a performer, I'm very genuine and I'm just like myself on stage. And I think that's what I have to offer is just myself. Mm -hmm. And, um, I think people like just the genuine, funny, nice, goofy person that I am on stage. Cause I'll be serious and then I'll crack jokes and, yeah, I think that's what I have to offer. I think we have to, like, as artists, look at yourself as an individual and not as, like, part of, like, the music. You know what I mean? Yeah. Does that make sense? I mean, that's what I fuck with, but it, it's nice to hear somebody else say that. Yeah. It's tough. I don't know, because, like... Oh, yeah, it's so tough. I sometimes notice this, like... One of the jobs that I've done more recently, like a, like a, a, like a day job to make money. I noticed there's like, I had like a rough neck job for a while. Yeah. And they, those guys feel a lot of camaraderie with each other. And like, that's what they, they like meeting another rough neck and compare, like comparing stories about, Oh, like what's the craziest stuff you've ever had to do? Like, what is, how did you do that? Like, Oh man, I had to run this, drill into the ground doing this to pull this thing out they find a lot of like bro relations right there and then I notice like in other fields I notice the same thing and like in if you're a if you're a if you're a sound engineer sound engineers can nerd out with each other and stuff and like this is cool I love talking to songwriters and I love talking to musicians but I think I notice sometimes, I don't know if it's just me or if it's all of us, but like, I think sometimes there is a a focus on like this, this individual path that sometimes I think I, I don't know who to have camaraderie with. I don't know who to look at and be like, yeah, we're peers and like, like, like in the same, in the, in that same way, I guess. I don't know. Like, I don't, sometimes I wonder if I don't maybe put enough emphasis on like being a part of the music community. Yeah. You know what I think some of it is, especially like as you're a songwriter, I'm a songwriter and that's like a big part of us as an artist. I think, um, in many ways, a lot of artists or musicians who don't write songs and are just like, they, they're just a lead guitarist or they're just whatever. Some of them don't have the respect for, songwriting Mm. it's just like a you (laughs) know what I mean shots fired no I'm I don't think they get it 
to the same degree. That's not what, but that's okay. And I'm not saying that's a problem. I'm just saying they don't <laughs> value that the way we do. I do. And agree. I value both. I'm, I'm the type that values both. Like I freaking love a killer electric guitar player, a killer drummer, like, but I think sometimes, especially because there is that camaraderie, it almost brings it on to where it's like, and that's just, that's fine though. Like, I know that sounded bad, but it's more <laughs> like a, like, you know, like what you're saying that, that camaraderie, it's yes. like when you get a bunch of electric guitar players who are all great and they all shred, they're not thinking about the words. Right. Exactly. That's not, that's not, and that's fine. So, so, but then, but there are some that are. Yeah. And I didn't, by the way, didn't mean to make it sound. No, I know. That was funny. That was, I, I, yeah, you're right. It sounded like that. But, but there are some electric guitar players, drummers, whatever that are like that. There are. And, and those are the ones that you can find that as a songwriter. For me, it's been hard, but I have found those people. Um, there's a lot of great art, like guitarists that are also like, songwriters as well but you know I think for me anyway some people just love music and they love just shredding and like doing their thing then there's the individuals that they don't write songs but they love music for the same reasons we love music yeah you know like actually you had Chaz on the Uh podcast he's one of those that loves music for the same reasons we love music and is like a monster drummer and can like play whatever but he loves music for the emotional thing. Yeah. So like he's been playing with me for some stuff and that's like somebody who has become a friend of mine. So it's like, those are the type of people that, that I have been able to find like, but they're harder to find. They are. Yeah. Well, you know, and you know, I feel like I'm speaking partly a little out of turn or like in a, in a more self deprecating way than I mean to. Cause one, uh, so one thing came to mind before I forget is that like one drummer in particular, Devin Forkel, who I've played with a, lo- a long time, I know that he thinks like he, that's how he approaches things. It's just like, I focus on whatever the song is doing. And, you know, I, I appreciate that as, as a kind of like thinking of him as a drummer, but also like remembering now Chaz Ray, John Ray, John Green, like these other, other instrumentalists that are like local that I consider and know are at like musically what they do with their instrument is superior to what I can do with any instrument. Really. It's just, they're so deeply invested. Yeah. They're pros. They're prof- yeah. They're world they're pros. class yeah. in, in those realms. But then when I sit down with someone like John Ray and we talk about it, he's like, yeah, I really liked what you did on this out. Like he, he, no, he's paid attention to like something I've created in a way that I think I didn't even realize and i think to some degree it's on me to it to to like it, it, on so, to some degree i have failed to appreciate the fact that some of these great players like actually do give a shit about songwriting they just don't maybe talk about it in the same way but also to go back to what we were saying before it's just like i i think in this conversation i'm starting to realize that like it is songwriters it is people who work with words that i I obviously do feel the most camaraderie with and like who I end up gravitating to the most because of the understanding. It's, it's really a matter of speaking the same language. I think it's like, I don't think those guys hate songs or song. No, or I mean, cause where would they, to be honest, I'm not saying this, <laughs> yeah. they don't have, yeah, exactly. Without us, they don't have anything to shred on. <laughs> so <laughs> resp- just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, but for real, it's not that they hate us. It's just yeah. that that's not where they see that's not where they get excited about. That's not where they nerd out over. It's exactly. not what it's not their their number one thing that they pay attention to. Um, but I think that just goes to I think we all need more respect for everybody's thing in general. Right. Um, in general, I think. I mean, it's it is kind of in, it's a backbone in the business world. It's appreciated to some degree for for like what it how powerful it is. But um, I don't know. It's weird. It's like. <sighs> In a lot of the artistic fields, people do prefer like the performer to the creator, like the writer. I think you can be a hybrid though. In songwriting, that's what I tried. To, yeah. That's what I try to do. You know, like songwriting I would is say, the best I would, example yeah, of that. Like, yeah, for sure. Um, I I try to be both. That's that's the goal is to be both. The thing I don't like about just a pure performer, as for me, the reason I wouldn't want to do it is because it takes the personal 
yeah. aspect of it. And that's all that I want is the personal yep. connection with who the my band members, the I'm like such a feely person that that's it's not it misses the mark for me if I'm not me, if that makes sense. You know, when you were talking about um, like when you kind of realized that people could write their own songs. Yeah. I had the opposite experience as a kid. When I was a kid, I thought everyone wrote their own songs. Really? So when like I didn't know that people were entertainers, I thought it was like all these people create the things that they put out. And I remember once just like. I, I liked Tim McGraw a lot because okay, yeah. I was like straight up 90s country. Yeah, yeah of course. Kid, yeah. You know, Tim McGraw was like my number one dude probably. And I, I remember like him releasing a song and I was like, yes, he said this in a song, but he said this in a different song. And my dad was like, he didn't write those songs. And I was like, <laughs> what? Devastating. What are you talking he, about? He like crushed your whole <laughs> yeah. world. Like, what do you mean he didn't? Are you kidding me? Okay, well, at least Johnny Cash wrote all his songs. And he's like, no. I'm like, oh, my God. Of course, yeah. Johnny Cash was a great songwriter. but Yeah, he, he didn't write all of he them. He didn't write, like, uh, I think it was Long Black Veil. I thought he wrote yeah. that, which is, like, a traditional song. So, yeah, it, like, the idea that people were entertainers and they just, like, picked from a catalog. Of, so I had no idea that that was a thing until yeah. I was, like, much older. Yeah. To me, it was the opposite. <laughs> But it was also more because I didn't even know of the other artists that existed, mm. to be fair. It was like, I was like, okay, there's only like these huge stars right. that perform on huge stages. And, you know, and like, I hate that. I, I hate Coliseum shows. Like, I hate them so much. Like, I, you don't like to go to them? Yeah, unless I, I will go to them if I get a good seat. Mm. Because to me, I'm like, why am I staring at a screen? <laughs> yeah, for real. Like, literally, that's not the point of live music. Yep. I could watch a YouTube video at home of, like... That the, would be way better. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So I just get mad if I'm not close. The, the last two shows I remember going to like that, I saw... The last time I saw the Avett Brothers and the only time I ever saw Bon Iver... Okay. I just watched a screen and it was yeah. just pointless. I just You're was like, why like, did I pay this. like 70 bucks for this or yeah. whatever? So, and I put on, like, I mean, I think for, I, I saw Jason Isbell at um, Deepak, which is not like a Coliseum. It's, it's a big, I like those size venues. Um, but I'm the type, like any sort of venue, I'll either, if I, if it's general admission, I'm going to try and get there early one. Cause I'm short, <laughs> but two, I love to be like as close as possible. Like I want to experience what the artist has to offer. But like for, for the Jason Isbell concert, I paid extra because I was like, if I'm going to see Jason Isbell, one of my favorite artists of all time, I'm going to pay extra and be third row so that I can like be close and experience. Yeah. You know, if you, it's like the difference between like 30 bucks to me, it's like way worth it yeah. to me. Oddly, this is going to sound weird. Oddly though, it's true. I've never, I don't, I don't like, I don't like going to shows. I thought you were going to say you don't like Jason Isbell. <laughs> no, no, no. I was like, okay, I'm going to leave. <laughs> no, it's not that. But you don't like going to shows? I don't. I like playing shows. <laughs> and See, I equally love going to shows. I feel like I should. I should. Maybe you haven't I gone just, to the right ones. I mean, what I do is... My Who thing have you is, seen? I've seen a lot of the people that I love. And so my, my thing is this. Anybody I love enough to see in concert, I go see them like one time ever and then I'm done because I just want to see them one time ever and have a great experience. But like, but it's still not that great of an experience. I get, bo I get bored after a certain amount of time. It's just, I want to be on stage. I want to be on stage and it, it's not just music. I remember when I was a kid, I used to drive my dad crazy because he would take me to like Warthogs games or Wake Forest games. And by like the middle of the game, I was like, I just would much rather be at home shooting basketball or something. I don't, this is just, I'm just sitting still looking forward. That's all I'm doing. And at a show, it's like, I want to be the person giving people the experience. I don't want to be on the other side of it generally. I can't relate to that. <laughs> I think it's so magical. I know. It's, I sound, no, it doesn't it's make sense. No, it, it makes sense. It does make sense. It doesn't. It doesn't make sense to me, but I get what you're saying. Yeah. It makes sense for what you're saying. It, I mean, yes, it's like you can follow the logic, but 
I've never heard another musician say they felt this way. You know, most of them are like me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I, I've never heard it. Ex- I've never actually heard. I don't think anybody. I mean, I love this. not performing sometimes and just being in a crowd. Yeah. I like them equally. It, it makes me feel nervous and stressed and it just makes me want to run away. <laughs> you get nervous. I get maybe the word is anxious or like, like for them. No, it's like I have. It's like I have energy that I don't know what to do with it. And I think it's like a a desire to participate. You just. You You know what? That's probably what it is, is the desire to participate. But I'm not going to go dance and like zone out to the show. Scream sing loudly. I probably should do that. That's what I do. Yeah. (laughs) Because I'm like, I'm like a kid in a candy store at a (laughs) concert. I know I look like a little dork. (laughs) Like I, that is when I am like gleeful. I am aware of this. I've had people tell me, Casey, you look so excited and like you're having the best time to where it's like funny. And I'm like. Probably, probably. <laughs> I love the word dork. <laughs> oh, I can be such a dork. I used to not think that I was, but I'm a dork. Yeah. I totally did not think I was until I, I don't know when I had this realization. Probably like uh, being on stage. Cause like I'm the type to like make jokes or like forget something. And then I like say it to the audience and it comes out funny. And then I have to like make a joke about it. And I'm like, hi. I'm kind of a dork. <laughs> okay, well, I'll own it. I think I, I like it. thinking about me in like high school. I'd be like, oh, that's such a bummer, Casey. <laughs> but I think it, people find it endearing. Like yeah. I find people that are a little bit like that have their quirks and who are just like, but I think too, everybody is a bit of a dork. It's just whether they let it show or not. Yeah. I just don't care. My thing has always been like, as long I used to I used to care what people thought a lot, but in like a very different way than I think most people cared. I'm not saying that this way was healthy either, because I've definitely changed my viewpoint of this. Um, but for me, I've always been even like as a kid, it was like, well, I don't have to be cool, but I always want people to know that I'm a nice person mm. and that I'm nice. Um, and I thought for the longest time that if you were nice, everybody would like you, mm. which is not the case. Yeah. But now at the end of the day, all I care about is you can hate me, but I'm always going to be a nice person. I try so hard to be nice and treat people fairly. So if you don't like me, that's fine. That's just, I don't, I'm not your person. I'm not the type of person that, but that's all that I care about at the end of the day. Cause yeah. to me, it's like, you know, the most disappointing thing to me is when people are rude and, assholes for no reason because life is hard and it's like what's the point of just being rude or arrogant or whatever to me everybody has their thing and everybody's going through their thing um so the least I can do is be nice and then if they don't like me that's their problem not mine and I'm not trying to be cool I'm just it's life is too hard to also try for other people I mean I like that. I think that sounds balanced. I think what, uh, and I, I think in a way I try to relate to that. Yeah. I, I, I think I used to be more like a brooding, like, uh, uh, like a brute. There was at least a spell where I was more like a brooding sort of like false sense of arrogance that I used as my vehicle yeah. for trying to be ambitious. For me, that's the healthy version of it though. I didn't, I used to always want people to like me. Mm, yeah. Just because I was nice and I didn't, and and then when people didn't like me, it hurt my feelings. Now I just don't give a shit. Like yeah. you don't like me, whatever. I Because I know that. I'm a nice person. Yeah. But I get what you're saying too. Well, and the thing about it is, like, it, the, when with that, there's something about ambition that seems to require a bit of a that that ability to say fuck you, that ability yeah. to be like, I have different. I don't need anything from from you, from this person, or whatever. And that's a hard line to figure out which side to be on, you know? Like, yeah, I think you can be in the middle. I try and be in the middle. It's hard. Yeah. Trust me, it's hard. Um, you have to not be too positive and you have to not be too negative and you have to be just kind of like centered in that. But yeah, it, it is like, I do think as an artist, you have to just not care. Because especially like, and I think that's also what has helped me be that way is because as an artist, I learned 
not everyone's going to like you. Mm-hmm. Um, but that doesn't take away from whether you're good or not. Mm-hmm. Which is why I hate like when people will talk about music and be like, well, this person is bad. When it's like, clearly this person is not bad. You just don't like their style of music. I mean, there's going to be some times where that's true. They might be bad. Yeah. But there's a lot of people that will literally call a musician of a genre that they hate bad. And I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. That's scientifically <laughs> false. <laughs> like, it, they're not. Yeah. So I've gotten to the point where now I'm secure in what I bring to the table. I know I have a unique voice. I also know I know how to use my voice and I sing properly and I have range and I, I can do what I do. But I know there's going to be people who either hate my voice or love it, but they can't say I'm a bad singer. Yeah. I don't care if you don't like my voice. That's fine. There's certain voices that I don't like, but I'll look at them and be like, yeah, that's a great singer. But would I listen to their music? No, because I don't like their voice. Yeah. But it's like very much this thing where we we call what's good and what's bad based off of what we like, which is just, I think, yeah. really wrong. And I think as an artist, it's something that we see clearly, which can help you just not care about things in life in general. Because you just learn that people just have these judgments about things and it defines how they interact with you and whatever. So at the end of the day, it's on them and it's not on you. You can just control how you view yourself and how your people view you. Because if you're making music the right way, you're going to attract the people that that are your people. I think judgment's the right word. and I, I mean, I think it's safe to say, it seems to me, that like people, they have a tendency to just use fast track, like objective language that that really what would be more suitable is is something more subjective like exactly what you just said if people if it was more commonplace for people to talk about the arts as you know this is my perception of it and it's i'm not claiming it as an objective truth that applies to all reality it's just like this is my criticism and that it doesn't have to be correct and your counterpoint to me doesn't have to be correct yeah. it's like they're they're just different but it does have to be this fine line too of where you're secure and you're confident, but you can't be like, I, I really don't have tolerance for arrogance. Mm. And I think that's because I, one, I just have never like in any sort of thing. I just don't, it doesn't, to me, it makes zero sense. There's always going to be someone better than you. Mm. So what is the point? Um, but it, it also is something that holds you back too, because you have to be able to be secure in growing and like knowing that you can grow and be able to be collaborative to some degree yet still know what you want to create. Like for me, um, I feel like the biggest way that I grew as a musician was when I did my first EP. I'd never recorded before, um, but I wanted to, I didn't even know that I wanted to produce my EP because I didn't even know what that meant, but I, I did. Um, and so I was really careful about who I picked to work with because I'm, again, as I've said a bunch, I'm a very feely person and I can't create with somebody that I, I wouldn't be friends with mm. and that I don't feel like comfortable with. Um, so I ended up meeting um, Doug Williams. I don't know if you know him. Mm -hmm. um, and that's who I record with. Um, but so much of that was like this, this for me it was one that... I, I came into it not knowing anything and that he's a very like gentle person, like just chill and was very much like, okay, well, but you know your songs. And he like challenged me because I was like, he was like, what instruments do you think should be on these? And I was like, I don't know. He's like, yeah, you do. <laughs> and I was like, do I? And he's like, yeah, you do. He was like, make a list of your arrangements. And then if I have anything to add, then I'll say it. But if I don't, then I won't because I truly think that you know your music and yeah. you don't need me to produce it fully. I think you want to produce it yourself. We can produce it together, whatever. Um, but there was like a couple songs where he added an instrument or whatever. And it, I was, I'm not so like, you know, like there's some artists that it's like, this is how I have to do it, mm -hmm. you know? And then you lose that ability to grow in a lot of ways and his 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 input 
was hearing things that I wasn't hearing just because it came from me and I just I wasn't capable of it but it made the song so much better I think you have to be able to um not think that you know all things about even your music you have to be able to hold true to the core of your stuff but also be able to collaborate because I think other musicians make other musicians better I think when you are so like you know I don't know I do think music like I think songwriting can be a very like personal thing and it can be really easy to get in this headspace where you don't want anybody to touch it or like you know Mm -hmm. but I think that people can add things to it or approach it and if you have this relationship with this other artist it doesn't change the core of the song it just makes it better I agree I think and so I think I think simply speaking I agree about the idea of what arrogance is I guess there was a part of me that felt it was worthwhile conversationally to to like voice an argument for arrogance and then there's like there's a question of why and I think, I don't know, it's in, it's interesting because it it must serve some purpose for those who try to embody it. And I, the first person that came to mind was like Conor McGregor, who okay. just like, while he gets trained by people, really his whole thing is just to be bombastic. And yeah, and, yeah. You know. That was I, a good example. <laughs> yeah. Like, you know, he's, he is arrogance defined uh, and it works in his favor, you know, and, and I think of musicians I've known over the years that they, they must try to embody that spirit in the same way that's just like, and I, I think of it as like. I think you can be that spirit and be still pliable. I think so sense. too. And I think that's probably the best way to be. I think, I think those people, I think people who embody arrogance do so believing that it's going to be the best route for them, like believing they're going to conquer the world. And I too why I see an allure in it, but I also see the downside to it. And so I don't think it's necessary to have or to be committed to in the creative process. I think process. you can be like extremely confident, yeah. almost bordering on cocky. But, um, and you can be cocky, but I think that there's like, uh, there's this, there's a cockiness that is so unhealthy that some musicians have to yeah. where it's like, one, you treat everybody around you like crap unless you think that they're at your caliber. Caliber Two, you get in your own way because you think there's only your way or the highway, which is not how music works in general. But I do agree with you that I think there is, like, to some degree, there are some people who have that and they use it so well. But even what you're saying with, with Conor McGregor, like, I think you can be arrogant because it's you know it's going to lead you to your destination but i but you have to be able to be like well if you see it not working for you to check yourself yeah yeah there has to be that you know what i mean there has to be the self awareness and and the humbleness like the just like a little iota of, <laughs> to to be like well okay i see that this isn't beneficial to me anymore you know yeah. you have to be able to use it to its advantage and then drop it when it's not going to help you farther yeah definitely it only goes so far but and yeah it will destroy you <laughs> yeah it is funny though because i i was talking to um the guy that plays electric with me a lot and he's all like he's like the most humble guy but he's always like but like I love like a really arrogant person sometimes, like, which yeah. it sounds like what you're saying. Like you're like Conor McGregor, like which I get. Conor McGregor. He was I like mean, you know like LeBron James. I love him and yeah. he's so caught. And I'm like yeah, I mean yeah. There's something about performance. There's something about that type of performer. And like uh, Father John Misty, I think his first, well particularly the I Love You Honey Bear, and then it really went far with uh, with the the third one. Um, what the hell was that one called? His third album. Those two, he was just an arrogant son of a bitch. Yeah. And like that was his character. And a lot of people re- responded negatively to it. And a lot of my friends were like, he sounds like a prick to me. But I saw what he was doing. I saw that it was like, it, I don't know. To me, it was like important. And I'm not going to further contextualize that. But I, I think I understood what he was doing. I get what you mean why. with character. Cause I think to some degree, like the Conor McGregor thing is definitely a character. Yeah, exactly. That's the thing though. It's not genuine arrogance is right. what it is. It's arrogance, but it's not so 
full. It's like performative. Yeah. Yeah. It's like half believed and half performative. If yeah. it's com- fully believed that you're just like the best person on this planet, I just don't think that it, it's beneficial. Mm. I don't. Uh, maybe it'll get you far, but eventually you're going to have a really shitty downfall. Yeah. It's not going to forever. I just don't think that you can live on this earth and that be. It's just not from a positive place. Yeah. I think it's got to be psychologically damaging. Yeah. It might be like. I it, there could be an argument that it's absolutely professionally beneficial forever. I don't know, probably not, but psychologically, it, I don't think it can. Yeah, because I just don't think that. I mean, nobody is ever gonna have a perfect, easy life of it. So right. when you're somebody who's so like certain that they're like they got it going on when life hits you, imagine how devastating that is. Yeah, it that can't be good for you psychologically. No, and and I guess. I guess if you're really damaged psychologically, you're not likely to navigate life uh, as well as you as you could, even if you do, even if you do play a really arrogant character, you know? Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, the music industry is just the people. To me, it's like you either they're some of the nicest people you'll ever meet or it's the opposite. Mm hmm. Um, but there's so many amazing I like I do love our other artists and stuff, but I do think as a songwriter, I relate to. Up until recently, I haven't really had a music community at all. Um, but then uh, finding some people to play with me um, has helped a lot. Um, but yeah, for the longest time, it's been so lonely because I literally have always played by myself up until... Um, I think for my EP release was the first time I played for with a full band. Mm. Um, and then for Floyd Fest, I got a full band and that was like, crazy that I even that that even happened and yeah it was so much and it was awesome and I've always wanted the goal is to have a band um but for so long it's just been me by myself um which I think is to some degree also it sucked in that it was lonely but it really forced me to become a very like unique artist because I didn't have people around me shaping me yet I just shaped my own music and it doesn't sound like other people's I think I think you can hear influence which I would want to but I think that I have something that sounds a little bit different than other people and I think a lot of that does come from the fact that I wasn't surrounded by like people and like following trends and what they thought was cool I was just doing what I liked you know yeah but I do love a band and that's definitely the goal is to have like a a full full time band for me anyway. There's some people that just like playing with just a guitar. Yeah. Are you that or do you like a band? I really love playing solo, but and it's not just well, I was about to say strategically I do like also having a band because like uh it's it's a it's a way better, I think more di- like more dynamic, eclectic yeah. dynamic show. Uh and I love that too. Like I love I love other players and I love seeing what they're capable of and the way that people have tended to affect my music is always generally been a positive thing. But so, so when I, so any preference I might have for being solo is not out of like not being comfortable with other people, but solo is just like, I just, I can just like close my eyes and zone out and I'm just like in a different place. I feel that so wholeheartedly. A band is so much harder for me. Because I, I am a, like that when I perform by myself. I just get in the zone with the band. You have to make sure that you're you're a little bit yeah. more rare. But I do think that the longer you play with a band, you can get to that level to where they know you so well that you don't have to, to work. So that's yeah. the goal for me is to have like a, a solid, permanent, more of a permanent band to where we, we're playing together so much that I'm able to let loose the same way that I am when I play by myself. Yeah. Yeah. You My know? old band, it was definitely that way. Yeah. And it was just like, that's like magical. It was magic. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, that's, that's the type, that's the magic people be talking about is, is, yeah. is that, and that's very hard to find. It's very hard to find. Yeah. It's, it's also like you have to find people that are on board with your music. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and that's hard too because there's so many great musicians, but they're all doing their own projects or whatever, and you have to find somebody who's like m- buys into your stuff enough to be like, oh yeah, I wanted, I want to be to be in this band. I want to be yeah 
backing you and and playing big shows with you and and I like this music and whatever it is um and then everybody wants those people yeah <laughs> so you just hope that they like your music better <laughs> than somebody else's you know Oh, yeah. it's hard it's hard to admit but and 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 i think that the people i like there let me be more clear because i don't want to say the wrong thing there was a spell in between so i had a band called the tyler nail trio yeah that was like we were it was just that was the band we just made the most sense when that band disbanded i tried to put together different things and i think i was really trying to force bands together and i think that's part of why it didn't work but it was also just I don't know. It was like fate was against me. One band member would move away and I'd replace him. And then another one would move away and I'd replace him and somebody would quit. And I'm like, what the fuck? Like, why is this so impossible for me to get this thing off the ground? And I would try that. And then I would get like real depressed and I'd go into hiding. And I'd try it again and I'd get depressed and go into hiding and pop up here and there playing solo shows or whatever. And finally, post COVID, I was like, I'm just going to really orient myself back toward this thing that I feel like is calling me back to it. And I've been doing that since. And I've been playing with people that I trust. That's and, everything. And it, yeah, and it's good. I think for me, so so if they were to hear this, I don't want it to sound as though I'm saying that like the people I'm working with now, it's not as good. In fact, one of the people I'm playing with now was also in that trio. You that have it's, it's different though. You have to get to the you, you haven't been playing as long with them yet. It's right. not going to be at that magical place yet, yeah. but it can be. Exactly. Especially yeah. if you have that trust with them. Yeah. So I, I just I wouldn't want it to sound like I don't appreciate where yeah. I'm at. Yeah. No, with I know what you're saying. As far as comparing the two, also I'm on this thing where I'm, I'm really personally getting back in touch with love and music and doing that solo I mean that's how I started playing music it was just like I mean I played with other people too but when I found myself solo was was like a that was like life change and that was just yeah. like I can do I think this. you have I mean, you don't have to but I think it really helps if you have gone through a period where you're just playing solo mm -hmm. yeah it's it's very developmental it's like you I'm so thankful for that part of of the music journey for me how did you like you told me about taking lessons and stuff yeah it was just like after that he was like you ever you ever thought about doing gigs and stuff and then I that's sort of how I found more like different artists that I was listening to realize that this was a path I could do um and after that it's just like I started reaching out to to places to um play um coffee shops little breweries wineries and then slowly i was like well i can make money doing this actually yeah um and started reaching out to a bunch of of other um places i'm really lucky that um my family has always been like a hundred percent like oh yeah this is this is great this is what you're supposed to do this is what we want you to be that pursuing is um like me and my mom both book for me she's basically like a really manager. yeah that's awesome. Yeah. I'm so, so lucky with that. She is, like, amazing at it. Like, could be hired to do it. Yeah. And we have – it's funny just how – because, I mean, I still don't know what I'm doing, but I guess it's doing something. Um, But, yeah, it's just us reaching out to people. Now we're at the point where, like, people have been reaching out to me for really cool things. But it was all just a learning curve for us. But it was – um, you know, I think that's a huge thing. It's definitely a, the reason I am where I am is because of her. Um, cause she's always had my back and has been there when I've been at a low point being like, why am I doing this? This is just a bullshit industry. I can't, I don't get it. I feel so alone. Nobody around me gets it and thinks I'm crazy for like doing this. And it's like, Oh, that's cute. You want to be a music, you know? Um, and then also just I wouldn't be here without she's so good at, at, at booking and, and doing that. And I've done a lot myself as well, but she really has a magic touch um, with that um, just through. And, and when you have somebody like I'm lucky that who manages me and books for me is my mom because she always has my back and she's always like – it's harder when you do like I have had people that be like that have told me, you know, I have this person that books for me, but they book for like 15 other people. Yeah. I'm my mom's number one priority. You know, she's not booking for anybody else. Um, 
And you always have that person that keeps you, keeps your head on your shoulders, but also doesn't let you like just slump down to the ground and beat yourself up, you know? So it's, it's a good balance of that. Um, yeah. Yeah. I dig that. Yeah. Pa- like go mom. Um, go Olga. <laughs> Olga. Yep. Olga. Olga. Uh, I don't want to like take the opportunity to speak any ill against the community, but you just said something that was like kind of rang true. Like, yeah. Like, the whole, oh, cute, you want to be a musician thing. Like, how unfortunate it is that in this community, sometimes it feels that way. Sometimes it feels like it's that just the seriousness that there exists in some communities toward the value of musicians doesn't yeah. always exist around here. And I don't, I think in Winston, I think it might actually exist a little bit more than in Greensboro, from what yeah. I can tell. I think people just don't get it. They, if they're not in the music industry or they don't know people in the music industry, um, they just they don't know the, the work. Like I've had, and, and that's another thing about not giving a shit. That's another reason that as a musician, you're always going to meet people who don't get it and are like, oh, so you just hop on a stage and whatever. It's like they don't realize how hard it is and how much work goes in behind the scenes just like any other job if not more because you're always working you don't like we don't have a typical nine to five job where it ends you know like you're always what email did I get whatever you know um but yeah that that is it is such a thing like people just thinking Oh, that's cute. Like, oh, you want to be a star, you know? <laughs> you should oh. go on America's Got Talent. Yeah. yeah. Wow, you sound great. Why aren't you? I had this one lady. <laughs> I had. I've had people be like, uh, <laughs> this one lady came. Bless her heart. She came up to me and she was like, I, I like had played a gig at a brewery and she was like, Wow, you are amazing. Have you ever thought about being bigger? <laughs> and I was like. Uh, that's so funny. I was like, what does that mean? Like, duh. Like, d- I no offense, but this is not what I want to be doing for the rest of my life. I don't want to be playing a brewery. But it's not like you just one day are like, you know what? I want to play Red Rocks today. So I'm going to, like, you know, yeah. like, there's like, that's not how it works. I Take wish. To be famous, I wish. Yeah. But it was just funny that, like, yeah. And then I remember, you know, it's just nobody gets it. I remember there was this one, like, hockey player guy I was talking to this one time. Um, and he was like talking about hockey and then I was like, oh yeah, I'm a musician or whatever. He was like, yeah, and I'm talking about it. And I was saying something about like how much I, how, how hard it is and how busy I am and how much work. And he's like, huh, you know, I never thought about that. I, I always just thought, you know, you just step, you, you show up and you step on stage. And I'm like, you of all people mm-hmm. should get this. I mean, a, this is a skill like your skill. You, you're on a hockey league. You practice every day for this amount of hours and you think that. It's just like, I don't know what the disconnect is. It's almost like in the South, what you're saying is so true. Because now I'm even thinking about, they get it with sports. Yeah. They get that it's hard work with sports. They're like, oh yeah, baseball, (laughs) so hard. Minor (laughs) leagues, it's so hard to get into. And then it's, what is, I don't get it. What is it? And then it's like, you hear me, oh, that's so cute. Well, musician. (laughs) Like, I don't get it. I don't either. I don't either. It's so, it's so terrible. It's frustrating. Uh, And it's like right down the road. You know, Nashville is a state away and, you know, yeah, and it's it's frustrating uh, because in, yeah. in Nashville, in Austin and I think in probably L.A. and New York, artists in general, not just musicians, but art, but, you know, artists in general are treated more like you're in an industry like you because do people something. see the industry like yeah. right there, I think, whereas it's, they don't see it here. Yeah, and that's what sucks, and and it's honestly something I reflect on sometimes because it's like, well, maybe they have a point. <laughs> it's like there isn't enough industry here. I mean, like we're struggling to. But get that's what shows. makes it hard. That's what makes it harder. Yeah. For us than other people, but you know. Um, I'm sure it's like that in in other areas in the country as well, but it's frustrating because like I feel cynically about that. I feel frustrated when somebody maybe doesn't look at what we're trying to do and give it the seriousness that not only we try to give it, but like the club owners in town do give it. 
you know, it's less like it's the it's the consumer side that that they don't seem to see the the to the same degree, level. But I think that the people that like your music get it. Yes, of course. So there are those. at the end of the day, you just got to be like, these are just people that are just really naive. Yes, but I guess what I mean is. I worry that they're on to something because there's so um, little industry here, not on uh, toward us on a personal level, but like, I guess there are people I know of who fantasize about being a musician for about like six months and then give it up. And then it was just a cute time in their life. Yeah, Maybe I know a bunch uh, of those And too. I guess we just happen to be some of the ones that like take that much, much further <laughs> or whatever. But, you know, I don't know. Uh, I don't know what I'm saying exactly other than, I guess I can kind of wrap my head around where that comes from, but I do still wish that I, I, whatever it was, whatever the criticism is, I just wish there was more serious music industry in the area yeah. and, and that it wasn't so yeah. barren. I, I, I genuinely am just at the point. I don't care. Mm. Um, cause I know how much work I put into it and I've been seeing my work pay off and I've had some really cool opportunities and I've realized that like people even who sort of know, don't know. Like you can, there's like some really cool things that I've gotten to do that like other musicians would like be like, wow, that's awesome. But like your regular person isn't going to know what it is. So it doesn't mean, I mean, there's people that don't know who like, you know, like Jason Isbell is. Yeah. He's like killing it. Yeah. He is like living the dream right now. So there's, especially in this type, this side of the music industry, it doesn't matter. Like, because I'm never going to be a mainstream person. So to some degree, I have accepted the fact that I could be making a really good amount of money, living really well, doing this, but people are still not going to get it. Yeah. And it doesn't, it just, it is what it is. That's just how it is. You're because right. there's, it's so, it's such a saturated industry. It is. And that the corner that I chose is the non mainstream one. So they're not, you know, music is such a part of our culture, but the pop side of it, we see nonstop. So it's like the people that don't have any sort of other music outside of that then are just like, oh, well, then you're not doing anything. It's just it's just this weird thing. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. It is just a matter of finding, like, your audience, your people, and I think, honestly, not giving in to the cynicism that it's so easy to give in to. Yeah, you the, just can't think about the big, huge picture. It really, you just have to focus on yourself. Yeah. Not in, like, an arrogant way, but in a knowing what you have to offer and just toning in on your craft and just continuing to get better and better and not letting that get to your to you to you at all um and to your craft and to what you're trying to do yeah. but it's really hard which is the other thing that it's just funny cuz i i do truly think um on like a an emotional and mental um level being a musician is like one of the hardest things you can do mm. you i think it really um it really stretches you mentally and emotionally. I mean, physically too, but like, yeah, I, I don't think it's a hard path, which is one thing. Um, and there's no, especially with the music, there's really no direction that you have that's going to make sure that you achieve your yeah, goal. Yeah, there's no certainty. There's no, um, it's, it, you have to buy into yourself and just continue buying into it. And yeah, yeah, it's hard. It's a wacky thing that we've decided, not 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 just, a, it's a wacky thing that exists, that this is even a path people choose. Yeah, sometimes, I def, my sister is a veterinarian, um, and if I wasn't doing music, I wouldn't be a veterinarian because I'm too emotional and would not, I'm not squeamish, but I don't want to see people crying and <laughs> dogs dying and stuff like that. Or bad owners, I would probably just steal their pet and be like, I'm sorry, you don't deserve it. <laughs> but yeah, I do. I have envied her in, in many ways in that it's so appealing to me that that profession is like, you have to get into vet school, then you go to vet school, then you become a vet. Goal achieved. Yeah, exactly. There's a, you know, doot, 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 and you're there. Yeah. And it's weird because I am very much like I'm like the type 
when it's like something big, I'm like, tell me exactly what I need to do so I don't mess up and I do it. And then I, I go and I pick this as my job and it's like, <laughs> there's no. Maybe it's your catharsis. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe I'm trying to torture myself. I don't know. That's interesting. Well, shit. Um, before we shut it down, what do you, do you have any, um, what do you have on the horizon as far as like releases or shows or whatever? Yeah. Um, I don't have, I, I've been working on some stuff, but I think maybe I'm considering having, releasing an EP at some, some point, um, maybe in the fall. I don't know. I, I have some new songs that I'm really excited about, but, um, I'm playing, um, a couple festivals coming up, which that's what I'm really pumped about. I'm playing, um, um, this new festival, um, called Birds Creek in Tennessee, um, and then I'm playing Floyd Fest again, and then Bristol Rhythm and Roots. So I'm really pumped about all those. Hell yeah. Um, those have been like, yeah. And it's funny too, because again, being like, I've never, I didn't grow up in this industry. When I played Floyd Fest, that was literally the first festival I'd ever been to. Mm. And I didn't even know festivals existed until I got into this industry and farther into it. It's yeah. just funny. Um, but yeah, that was such a great experience and i'm so excited to be back um but yeah hell yeah yeah i'm pumped about those well i hope those go really well for you me um, too i'm i'm excited about it i'll have a full band it'll be fun you have chaz Ray. yes yeah at least i think for two of them for sure i think birds creek it's just gonna be um a trio pedal steel and electric and me who do you have playing pedal pedal uh, steel sean you? hickman Deshaun Hickman. You should check him out. He'd be another really great person for this podcast. Okay. I'll follow back up he, with you and try to he's get in touch with these folks. Amazing. Like, I've never heard somebody play the pedal steel like he does. Because hmm. he, can, he can play it like the tr- typical traditional, like, country, like, that sort of, like, whiny. I, that's not the right word, but the, I love that sound. I love that old classic sound that the pedal yeah. still makes. But then he can also like you close your eyes and you're like, oh, that's Derek Trucks playing like mm. electric guitar. He can make it sound exactly like an electric guitar, which mm. you don't typically hear it played in that way. It's usually played the really traditional way. He's just he he can play anything with strings. Yeah. Like he's I'm playing. I have another show. Um, I'm playing um, incendiary brewing for their um uh, out of the shadows showcase there's like a couple bands and he'll be playing with me but he'll be playing bass um but yeah he plays anything with strings um yeah he'd be really cool to have on it yeah i'll definitely follow up with you on that and he and plays with a bunch of people around like i think i've met him i'm That's, sure you have yeah. he's played with like everybody he's like I'm honored that he wants to play with me. I think him and Chaz and and my electric guitar player is great. He's his name's Hans. He's like has like one of the greatest ears. He's really like young too, and he's just he has no idea how how good he is either. Mm-hmm. But yeah, he's he's great. So I'm, I'm I'm like so happy that I I found all of them. So good, good. Yeah. Well, Casey, uh, we I feel like we covered a lot of great stuff. I'm really glad we got I got to hear about songwriting and stuff um yeah i don't know uh let's keep in touch let's for sure do some more stuff yeah uh thanks you're welcome <laughs> but <laughs> see i am a dork <laughs>